not sound. And where it's more looser, or make loose, like high Soft. sounds. Soft. Soft. High. Low. High. Low. In the middle, it's kind of like a mix. Traveling to my arm and then through my body. Which allows me to change where they lit up. I'll try not to break this thing. <laughs> the closer I put it to it, the more electrons go through. That's okay, so I'll place it against it. It's quite bright. Right there. But it goes to show that electrons truly cool. <laughs> 
so good at my job. Um, <laughs> it goes to show you that electrons can travel entirely wirelessly. In fact, a good natural example of that is lightning. That's literally static, created um, devices such as this one here. This is known as a van de Graaff. And I'll explain how it works and I'm not sure what it does. So, I've got a little crank here that I can spin around. And as I'm spinning this crank, there is a plastic belt inside of the tube that's moving around in a circle. At the very bottom and the very top, inside the metal ball, there are two metal cones. So as I'm spinning this crank, it's creating static. So tiny bits of electricity is then carried by the plastic belt into the metal ball and it charges the ball and the air around it. Pardon me, sorry. So here I have, you can see when the static enters them and they begin to repel each other. Like that. <laughs> Quite cool, isn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So literally, have you ever seen someone rub a balloon on their head? And then their hair gets all spiky and crazy looking. The exact same thing is happening. Their body is becoming charged with electricity, and then strands of their hair are repelling each other and reaching outwards in doing so. Yeah. And now the story of how this was actually first discovered is a bit odd. I don't really know.
are. At Earth, our home planet. We are located in the Goldilocks zone of our sun. This means that we are far enough away that we don't get far too hot and melt, but close enough that we don't turn into giant ice blocks. And because alongside this perfect balance of hot and cold, we have just the right amount of different ingredients in our atmosphere, our Earth is perfect for hosting life, like us. But we already know lots about Earth. We were born here, after all. That is, unless any of you are aliens, no? No aliens? <laughs> uh -oh. We've got an alien. That's concerning. All right, alien, you might know this planet we're about to head to. We are going to head to the first planet in our solar system, or more likely, the closest planet to our sun. Where do you think we're headed, space adventurers? Mercury. Mercury! Fantastic. We are on our way to Mercury. Mercury. Now, Mercury is the closest planet to our sun and the smallest planet in our solar system. And now that we're here, I think Mercury looks a lot like our moon. They both have a rocky surface full of craters, which have been made when asteroids and comets have crashed into the surface. Mercury is the fastest planet in our solar system. It travels at around 29 miles per second. That's roughly a hundred thousand miles per hour. And because it's so fast, and because it's the closest to the sun, so it has the smallest orbit, Mercury's year is only 88 days long. That means if you lived on Mercury, you would have a birthday every three months. Now that's a lot of cake. But I'm not feeling particularly hungry, so I think it's time we head off. Because while Mercury is the closest planet to our sun, it's not the hottest. It can get up to 430 degrees Celsius during Mercury's day. But at night, because Mercury has no atmosphere to trap the heat, it can get as cold as minus 180. So our next planet, is the hottest planet in our solar system. Where do you think we are, space adventurers? Mars. Mars. Okay, lots of different guesses. We're actually at Venus. Venus. <laughs> now, Venus's average temperature is a whopping 464 degrees Celsius. If you could withstand this heat, perhaps you would like to take a trip to Venus. It is known as Earth's twin, after all. So, would you like to visit oh, Venus? No. Yes! yes. Well, yes. I may have missed a yes. rather key fact, because yes. while it is known as Earth's twin, it's known as Earth's toxic twin, because it's covered in thick yellow clouds of sulfuric acid, which makes the planet stink of rotten eggs. And it creates a sulfuric acid too, which burns your skin. Now we can do something pretty cool in our spaceship. We can blow away those thick yellow clouds to take a look at Venus's surface. But I'm gonna need your help. So let's all take a deep breath in and blow it away. <sighs> now we are on the night side of Venus at the moment. But as we come back into the light, I think you'll see what I mean when I say it looks a little bit like a margarita pizza. <laughs> but don't you worry, there's not a giant margarita pizza floating about in space. What you're actually looking at is the fact that Venus's surface is covered in volcanoes. But if the volcanoes, smelly rotten eggs, and burning acid don't put you off, and you would still like to take a trip to Venus, you might want to consider that because it has such an intense atmospheric pressure, 
more than 90 times the Earth's. If you were to stand on the surface of Venus, it would feel as if you had a double-decker bus parked directly on top of your head. You'd be squished. You'd have flat as a pancake. And I, for one, don't want to be a pancake person. So I think it's time we move on. And now, we are going to head to a planet that we hope one day we'll be able to send humans to live on. Mars. Where do you think we're headed, space adventurers? Mars. Mars. Fantastic. Mars. We are on our way to Mars. And, as you can see, we nickname Mars the Red Planet because it's orangey-brown? But why is it this weird orangey-brown colour? Well, it's this colour because the surface of Mars is covered in iron-rich rocks, which oxidise and form rust. Now, oxidise is a fancy word for a particular chemical <coughs> process. It's the same process that occurs when you leave your bike out in the rain and it goes all rusty. Now, Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun and the second smallest planet in our solar system. And because it's so small, its gravity is 62.5% weaker than Earth's. So, whereas you would walk quite normally on Earth, on Mars, each step you would float a lot higher off the ground. It would look like you were taking massive jumps each time. And with that, I think it's time we head away from our four rocky planets and head to our gas giants. But be warned, watch your heads as we have to head through the asteroid belt to get there first. So Whoa. watch your heads, astronauts, as we head through yeah. the asteroid belt to yeah. our gas giants. Yeah, I must ask that we please keep mobile phones away. They do start to light up the dome. We don't want to ruin space for anybody else. So please keep those mobile phones turned off and away. Thank you. So here we are, space adventurers. We've made it through and we are at Jupiter. Now Jupiter is a gas giant and it's the biggest planet in the solar system. So big in fact, that it is bigger than all the other planets combined. And because it's so big, it gets its name from the king of the Roman gods. Now Jupiter is really just a big ball of weather. Its most famous storm is called the Great Red Spot. And it has been raging for over 300 years. And it's bigger than Earth. Now, Jupiter isn't alone. It has a total of 79 moons orbiting around it. And while Jupiter itself is too cold for life to live, one of its moons, Europa, is one of the most likeliest places to find life elsewhere in the solar system. So, the alien from earlier, perhaps you're from Europa. But Jupiter isn't the only planet in the solar system to have a lot of moons. And the planet we're going to head to now has the most moons of any planet in the solar system. Where do you think we're headed, space adventurers? Saturn. Saturn, fantastic. Yes. We are on our way to Saturn. Saturn and its beautiful rings. We um, think Saturn's rings are made up of pieces of comets, asteroids, and even shattered moons. These moons would have been torn apart by Saturn's powerful gravity before they managed to reach Saturn itself. And these pieces are made up of small chunks of ice and rock. 
which is why we can see them so well. The ice reflects the sun's light. Now we did say Saturn had some moons. In fact, Saturn has a total of 82 moons. And just like Jupiter, Saturn itself isn't likely to host life as we understand it. But some of its moons, such as Enceladus and Titan, have what are called internal oceans on them. These are oceans that are below its surface. And these oceans could support life. So, alien familiar. If you're not from Europa, perhaps you're from Enceladus or Titan. But for now, I think it's time we head away from Saturn's rings and its moons and head towards our ice giants. Neptune. Welcome, space adventurers, to, to Neptune. George. Oops, sorry, I got the name wrong. I meant Neptune. George's star. George's star was first discovered in 1781 by William Herschel. And it was the first planet that was found using a telescope. He named it George's star after the king at the time, King George III. But the scientific community wasn't particularly impressed by the name for two main reasons. Firstly, it's a planet, not a star. And secondly, King George III wasn't well liked. He wasn't the nicest of guys. And so they renamed the planet to a name that meant it would never be the butt of any jokes. Uranus! <laughs> I know, I know, it's still a rather silly name. Uranus is a Greek god, not a Roman one, like the rest of the planet's namesakes. And with that little story about Uranus, I think it's time we head off because we have one more planet to visit in our solar system. Where do you think we might be headed, space adventurers? Neptune. 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 Fantastic. We are on our way to yeah. Neptune. And when we get there, you'll see that it's this beautiful dark blue colour. And it's this colour because of the methane in its atmosphere. Now, methane is a gas, just like the air we breathe. <coughs> it's the same gas that comes out of a cow's bottom. <laughs> Neptune is a rather windy planet. Its flat wind can be nine times stronger than Earth's. In fact, its wind can whip so fast, it's supersonic. This means the wind speed can be faster than the speed of sound. And these winds blow frozen gases, such as methane and ammonia, around the planet. So, now that we've visited all the planets in our solar system, I think it's time we take a look at our entire solar system from afar. And these lines that you can see here are the orbits of the other planets. And the way we're looking at them right now, you can see they're all on one plane. They're all rather flat. But here we can see Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, and just about Mars's orbit around the sun. The rest of the orbits are a little lost because we're so far out, the light of the sun hides them. That's not the only thing in our solar system. Around the outside of Neptune's orbit, we have something called the Kuiper Belt. Now this looks like a giant cosmic space donut, and it's full of what we call dirty snowballs. These are chunks of ice and rock that are left over from the start of the solar system. And this is where comets can come from and asteroids. They can get flung in towards the middle of our solar system. But the Kuiper Belt's not the end either. Around the outside of that, we have the 
orc cloud. Which is purely theoretical at the moment. But maybe one day one of you will find out whether it's real. But again, this is not the end of the story. We can fly out even further to take a look at our galaxy, the Milky Way. And as we fly out, once we're past the Oort Cloud, you might start to see other stars whiz by. These stars could have other planets going around them, or even other stars in binary systems. Sometimes the poles can orbit around stars. And here we are, at our galaxy, the Milky Way. But again, that's not the end of the story. There are hundreds upon thousands more. I wonder how many other planets there are. How many other suns and moons there must be. What if there are space objects that we've never seen before? This is my secret to my teacher. He always is kind of like a brother to me, and his name is Mr. Tibble, and he's the best. No ne offense. Next, higher pitch. I sound like a squirrel, and I talk to the world, and I like my name.
Halo. 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 What's your name? You're a Dumbo. Oh yeah. Slow down a little bit. Again. You poo-poo head. You poo-poo head. Dumbo. You poo-poo head. Dumbo. Dumbo. Wait, I'm going to eat it. Ha, 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 ha. 